Hello and welcome back. It is Tuesday afternoon, about a half hour after the close. We're going to do an end of day review on the stocks that we had in the game plan this morning. Okay, so you can see we actually have the original blog post from this morning. So when this video is done and uploaded, I'm going to post it just below here. So we're going to work right down the list. Uh, we're not going to go over earnings. We're going to probably review that in the morning. Uh, so we're going to start right off here with the bullish ideas with volume and just to give you an idea again bullish ideas mean coming into the day the bias was long volume means an average of two million shares per day price is at least twenty dollars and ATR is a dollar fifty on average per day so again this is nothing more than the bias coming into the day was a long same thing here the bias coming into the day was a short for these okay and then we're going to go right down the list okay just to recap uh, what we have on the charts here, top left-hand corner, we have the weekly. Down here, we have the daily. And then this is a 15-minute, two-day chart of an intraday uh, candlestick chart. Uh, this line here is very, very significant. Um, if you haven't normally done it in your trading, yesterday's high and yesterday's low will always be very significant reference points. So just as we're looking at it, you want to know whether or not we're trading inside or outside of yesterday's uh, trading range, uh, as well as today's open. And we're going to get into exactly why in a second. So this is pretty significant here. We're looking at the spiders, obviously. We're just going to start out with this before we get into that list. Um, but what is significant here is coming into the day, clearly we said we're still bullish here. We're still bullish here, even though we had a down day yesterday. Um, so coming into the day the proper trade in the spy or in the market the bias was still long so you have a choice you get a day like yesterday you either step aside or you look for spots to get long now this is very significant here the opening price and I'm gonna point that out right now and how that compared to yesterday's trading and today's trading so bullish bias bullish bias breakout and we start to sell off this is where most uh, new traders especially or inexperienced traders can tend to get slapped around a little bit on an intraday basis where they know they want to be long the correct trade is to right to be long you get a signal like this where maybe you're bottoming out and you look for it to retest uh, another one very similar down here uh, otherwise known as hammers you get a hammer a, do a shooting star um, and then another hammer and then what I like to call a swing low which is a higher low on each side and you would look for that to bounce um, nothing wrong with those trades because you want it to be long however the VIX was going higher yesterday which was would indicate some selling pressure uh, the ticks were negative quite a bit we haven't really talked about them they're just market indicators but here's what I want to point out bias long bias long weekly and daily looking for a spot to get long intraday you see this here the opening price from today this is literally the first 15 minute candle and that's the open you can choose to say I would prefer to filter out my ideas by only in this case being long if and only if we are positive from the opening price indicator because now you have the longer term order flow and today's order flow so the point that I'm making is yesterday again long long selling off the entire day instead of looking for an entry to get long which would be kind of an aggressive trade depending on how everything's setting up um, but you can choose to wait for price to be trading above the open. Now let's get to yesterday's opening price. That is technically yesterday's opening price. So if you wanted to be conservative for yesterday, Monday the 27th, you could have waited for price to get up here to confirm these two. Nothing wrong with looking for entries here. I'm just trying to give you the most conservative, lower risk way of doing it to really, really be on the right side of intraday order flow. So in that case, it would have been here. If you would have sat out this push to the downside, then you had two different entry points that were possibility. You could have waited for it to trade above the previous day's low, which indicated we broke through, in this case, support, or waited for it to get above the opening price and then traded this 15 minute breakout looking for a push to the upside it wasn't a monster move 75 cents but it was a pretty clean move waiting for it to become positive after a big push to the downside in the direction of the higher time frames okay that was just a little setup uh, for finding a conservative trade so now we're going to jump back into uh, checking out this list here and again we're going to start out with the bullish and then bearish ideas that meet the criteria of volume, price, and average true range. So we're going to start out uh, with Netflix. 
Again, Netflix coming into the day. We have an inside week. Gap up, still holding on the gap, and today would have been a long. That would have been how we biased it this morning. I don't know if biased it is the right word, but you understand. Uh, so getting back into what we had mentioned before, here's the opening price in Netflix. And again, this saves you from sitting through this $6 move to the downside. Uh, we immediately open here. We go above it by maybe 50 cents, but push all the way down very quickly. Get back above the opening price, and we basically have 564 to, let's call it, uh, the high here at almost 569, 568.95. So just using that one signal alone, waiting to be a little bit more conservative, and let's just say for argument's sake, we do the same thing on a five minute chart, we zoom it out. You had a little bit of an inside candle here to get involved there. So as it pushes down, you can see we never closed above on the five minute chart. A lot of whippy price action here. This would have been the conservative entry. You could have waited for it to get above here. Price cross, hold, or a pause, and we discussed that in the meeting this morning. All right, I'm going to jump back out to the 15. So again, coming into the day, we would have been looking for longs as we game planned on the list, and um, push to the downside right out of the gate. Probably would not have done nothing. Here is yesterday's low, and today's open, so that would have been a nice push. So what happens in the afternoon? Well, same criteria. Almost the entire afternoon, we are still above the open. So now you are looking for intraday longs up until that point. And uh, you might have gotten one here. You had an inside candle and a bounce, maybe a little bit of a sell-off into the end of the um, lunchtime there. Uh, but you get the idea. I can't stress enough. When you add change from the open to the net change from yesterday, you start to get really powerful signals. So you have the weekly chart, the daily chart, and the intraday change from the open. Uh, so Netflix, if you had patience, you had a decent trade there waiting for it to get above the open. Uh, LYB was the next one. And we actually got some good follow through. And look, you think that's not significant? Look at that. Okay, pretty good move out of the open. Pulls back about $1.75. And look at that. Holds the open perfectly. Get an inside candle. And you could have possibly taken a breakout here to the upside. And again, long, long, above the open for virtually the entire day after this first 15-minute candle. Now, the interesting thing is we were pretty much inside yesterday's trading range. Uh, for most of the day. However, this is the power of being prepared for the open. We talked about that a lot this morning. Um, one thing also I want to talk about is now heading into tomorrow. So we have a gap, a doji, a really clean trend day. Another trend day, but here's the interesting thing about today's trend day. We did not open up near the previous day's high. Here's the high, here's the low, so we actually opened week. Tomorrow, what would you anticipate for tomorrow? Well, there's two things you have to look at. How much room do you have to go? Well, we got plenty of room here. It looks like we're looking at just over 115 for the next level. Um, cleared this resistance level here. I'll open at or near yesterday's close. We'd be looking for a break out of this opening range and looking for it to stay above the open, looking to continue to trade LYB long tomorrow. Next we have CTRP. Wow, look at how clear this ends up getting. We have a whole bunch of indecision on the daily. So we have strong, well bid on the weekly. Well bid means higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and now an inside week just in front of resistance. So we have some room to the upside and we have clearly buying pressure in multiple time frames. But look what we have out of the open. You think that signal is going to keep you out of mediocre trades intraday? Can't stress that enough. So there really wasn't that much to do here. Cyber, we mentioned this on the blog a few weeks ago as a possible short squeeze coming out of down here. And uh, let's see, coming into today we had a reversal candle. A lot of indecision here in Cyber. Um, I would like to see a healthy pullback like we got today, but again, how fast did it take to train your eye to see, my God, selling, pr my gosh, excuse me, selling pressure all day and not a lot of reason to be long. Now, I want, I want to point something out. Um, if you, let, let's assume this is a daily chart, even though we know it's a weekly, I just want to point out the type of signal. Um, let's say this is a nice flag on a daily chart, and it could be on a weekly chart, but I just want to point it out in, in the context of how you'd set it up a trade on the intraday basis. You pull back, you get a flag, you get a flag, you get a flag. So now you start to anticipate what kind of open you would get the next day after this big down day. Well, if you get a push down and reversal and you start to trade through the previous day's low, here you could be a little bit more aggressive even though it's below the open because of the setup you have on a bull flag looking for it to retrace. Okay, um, we had this longer term pennant 
in cyber ended up breaking out to the upside not much really to do here even though it was on a daily game plan to be long uh, next first solar all right so what do we got actually here oh, perfect example all right we want it to be long even though we have all these indecision weeks we do have room to go up to 75 but here's exactly what I'm talking about down day down day so the next day you get followed through to the downside even the first 15 minutes was higher no break out of that opening candle except for the downside pulls back pulls back pulls back even though it's not above the open you could have been a little aggressive here because of this multi-day pullback now if you don't get involved down here you have two separate entries you wait for it to cross and close above the previous day's low which is an entry signal or you wait for it to get above the open price and then you start to look for your longs in that sense there so again the whole point here is you're not looking for a short sale at all regardless of how hard it sells off intraday you're still looking for longs it's just a question of when a long would trigger uh, next we have myland m y l all right inside week remember we talked this morning in the game plan room about expectation for follow through going to get limited follow through on an inside week even though you absolutely would prefer to be long here yesterday we pulled back and you can see here now we are setting up an inside day and if you remember what we talked about in the room today inside days lead to expansion and volatility so if we break out of the inside day in the direction of these higher time frames we can expect a trend day to the upside so pretty clean inside day there that we're looking at and last but not least Amazon Amazon inside week after the huge move so technically it's a gap but after a huge move to the upside on earnings so far two days pulling back and look at how clean that is to not do anything look at that that is amazing look at how clear as a bell that is now we did not pull back two days in a row so it's a different chart than the other one that we looked at so you're less inclined to be buying dips here unless it's up here okay so good excellent excellent examples um, I'm excited that we get to see some really good examples and the differences between trading a pullback that opens lower versus a strong stock that opens flat and pushes higher. That's some, some really, really good examples there. All right, some bearish trades, UNP. These are bearish ideas, volume, average true range of price. You can see here on the daily chart. And actually, looking on the daily chart, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. And remember, if you remember what we talked about in the game plan meeting this morning, yes, price did bounce out of here, but you have to really pay attention to what are the levels that price are actually trading at. So we can even zoom this one in. Blipped out there once, blipped out in here once, but pretty much price is trading within this range here. Um, 10, what is the price here? 111.44 to. 10630. So that's really the range. Uh, if I had to look at this again and wasn't doing it, bleary eyed at six o'clock in the morning. Um, I would probably have not had this in the list at all, and, I, and now we actually have almost three inside days in a row. Um, I do like it on the short side for this reason and this reason, um, but now looking at it, I don't like it until it breaks this low at all. All right, next we have SNDK. SanDisk actually looks pretty good on the short side. Uh, we did not look at how clear this is now. <laughs> look at that above the opening price the entire day so now you know any short sale you take above no matter how much you want to be short here not as much conviction until it trades below here so not only not only was it not today below today's opening price but it was actually positive from the entire day yesterday even though we wanted to be short from yesterday's close so a lot of reasons to filter that out and not be short UTX United Technologies Okay, we actually did follow through to the downside, but we never stayed below the opening price that much. And actually, here is the previous day's low up here. So we actually traded back above and into yesterday's trading range as well. So uh, I guess being fully honest at this point, when we pushed higher here off the open and then sold off, I would have probably have been looking here right around the opening price clearly below yesterday's low looking for a new spot to sell short looking for follow through here uh, but we did end up holding the support now so now we actually have a uh, level here as we discussed in American Express this morning it wasn't able to get through so also should not look at that should not have been any shock that it actually held that support so what would I have done 
I would have looked for this to form some kind of a bear flag here, looking for a push to the downside, but we never ended up getting it. So we're looking to be short, find support, stays above the open. It's a do nothing for the rest of the day. Next, we have travelers. Inside week, strong uptrend. Inside week, lowers trade expectation. Strong close yesterday off a moving average. I would have looked for follow through today. Here's the previous close. Here's today's open. So we actually got a lower opening, but right away we bounced. Whipsawed back down, up and down above today's opening price. Come into the day wanting to be short. Spends most of the day above the opening price. Again, lowers expectation for follow through. A lot of these shorts bounced with the market midday. LVS, looking back on this right now. Yes, uh, longer term downtrend. Absolutely. Throwing some old school trend lines. Would I want to be short that stock if I had to do it over again? I would say absolutely not. It's in the middle of nowhere. Look at that. It's literally in the middle of the last three months. So let's move on from that one. Hmm. Triple M. All right. So we broke down from support two well-offered weeks in a row out of this multi-week consolidation. This is actually a trade you would fully expect to follow through. Uh, we actually did follow through. Here's the previous close. Here's the opening candle. Here's the opening price. So you could have been very aggressive out of the gate. Everything was lining up. Broke support. Clearly can see it here. Follow through from previous close. Both looking for a sell short. 157.75. About $1.50. Um, was there any support telling you to have booked a profit down in this area? I would say no. We already cleared that level. Uh, the fact that it bounced as hard as it did. Well, it is what it is. Don't cry to your mama. You had a good short out of the gate for $1.50. If you were holding for more while the market was bouncing, you had to weigh your trade expectation. And if the market's bouncing hard and this stock, um, I would say 3 ms a market stock, <laughs> wouldn't you? Pretty big. Um, so you have a choice there. That's one of those choices where you say everything's doing what it's supposed to do. Short, short, break support, uh, get a decent move out of the gate and bounces all the way back. I can't say you really did anything wrong if you were looking for that to make another move to the downside. You had room to go. You broke support. If it bounced back on you, you didn't really do anything wrong. It was just one of those things that bounced back. Only other decision maybe you could have made was said the market was bouncing really hard and you wanted to take the profits off the table because of that. Win very similar to LVS. Very nice long-term downtrend. I don't like this multi-week consolidation. Uh, trade expectation for follow through is minimal here and you can see it a little more clear here so really not much to do here uh, UAL okay coming into the day again multi-week consolidation I do like the fact that it's making lower highs all the way down another lower high here would have fully expected it to follow through and we actually did and look at this am I convincing you yet about the significance of that opening price word to your mama look at that and there's yesterday's low. So right out of the gate, again, not a huge price move, but 61.75 out of the open. 60, dollars 75 and UIL is a pretty decent move, and that's a pretty clean trade. Remember what we talked about this morning? Aggressively calling your opening plays based on multiple time frames, how it closed the previous day, and what you expect to happen. And that's a pretty good move that could have paid you this morning. You only need one of those to pay you. RCL, same thing, well-offered week. Broke support, no other close support, every reason in the world to look for follow through. Open up a little bit higher here. Here's the opening price again. Here's the previous low. Get a nice push down. We never get above. You could probably short it here. Not much follow through though. Um, and the last one here we have is ACT on this one. Weekly chart breaking out of three inside weeks, two inside weeks in a row in a breakdown, fully expecting it to follow through. Got a lower opening, did not stay there. And again, look how clear that is that we did not get below the opening price. You see the significance of that now? Um, I just want to get into the, it's already 20 minutes, so I'm going to get into some of the stocks that you guys had called out this morning. Uh, what do we have? Honeywell. All right, Honeywell, we actually said was a longer term pennant. We actually have an in, two inside weeks in a row, so that decreases the expectation for follow through. And lo and behold, indecision candle again. So we're really waiting for Honeywell. So we got two inside weeks in a row, 
and two inside days in a row, and now followed by another day of indecision. Even though it wasn't an inside day, we opened and closed at essentially the same price, which you can see right here. Okay. Uh, so actually, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and do these as much as possible. I take that back. I'm going to do them every day after the close. Uh, you can see how long it can take. So hopefully, uh, we'll get a lot of participation out of the group to get to the point where I'm calling out all of your trades after hours. And, and really, the single biggest thing here is setting up a bias for coming into the day, doing nothing but looking for that bias intraday, and then heading into the next day uh, with an expectation based on the last few days, the longer term on the weekly, where it closed yesterday, and what it's done the last three to five days in a row, setting up an expectation for the open.